They say I'm a photographer. I said no, I'm a storyteller. On my journey through the lens I made connections. One such deep soul connect was Suman. 2014 November. A beautiful girl with green eyes caught my attention at the Pushkar Camo Fair. Ever since then, I saw her every year at the fair and the bond got deeper. I never knew that just the camera could bring me close to people who were absolute strangers at first. Seeing how they lived and their struggles always affected me. We all think about making a difference, but then get caught up in the intricacies of making it work. The power of social media did it. One video and hundreds and thousands of people finally felt what I felt. Thank you to Humans of Bombay who helped me raise funds for Suman so that today she and her family have a roof over their head. No journey is meant to be simple and neither was this. With great hard work and determination, I finally made sure Suman got her home. She was elated with joy about her new house. Let's all try to make a difference. Every small effort we make will go a long way. And like every other story, I hope there's a happily ever after for Suman as well. I was truly proud to be a part of their immense joy and celebration. Suman, ये तुम्हारा घर कोई नहीं उठा सकता है तुमको इससे. Thank you. Thank you. आप सबने अपने घर दिखाया उसके लिए. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Dipti Shah, and welcome to my show, Artistry. Today, I have the pleasure of having the internationally acclaimed photographer and documentary short filmmaker, Miss Sonali Devnani. Hello, Sonali, and welcome to my show. Hi, Dipti. It's very nice uh, of you to have me here, and I'm very excited for this conversation of ours. Thank you so much. First of all, congratulations on your film Confluence, winning the best awards across the world. Thank you, thank you very much. What do you have to say? How do you feel? Yeah, this was. Um, I had no idea that this was coming. It was the uh, the Chicago South Asian Film Festival. Uh, you know, as filmmakers, we submit to many many festivals and. Uh, you know being nominated itself is such a big thing uh, that we are always so grateful for being nominated but having won the best documentary film was uh, totally a surprise and i was really sad that i couldn't be at there at the festival because of covid restrictions and all of that but yeah i'm so happy i hope this film does wonders in all the other festivals as well i'm sure it will and all the best from our side so nali before winning these awards how did you start with your photography when and what you know took you on this journey yeah photography was a by chance kind of a, a thing that came into my life you know as um, as a mother and uh, having a newborn or having a young child at home you always want to document them or have great photos of your children and that's what i did i started scrapbooking my oldest daughter's journey and uh, i realized i don't have really nice photos so i said you know what i need to get a nice dslr camera because in everyone's mind you get a great camera you're a great photographer so that's what i did i just bought a camera and then i started uh, i took a technical course on what is what i had i was never into photography as a child so for me it was all very alien and i started uh, shooting my my child you know at at home in the park um until then my you know my friends saw these photos of uh, of my daughter and they were like oh my god can you come and click our kids photos or can you document our kids birthday parties and i started doing that and it it became a job people started hiring me and uh, little did i know that uh, i was an event photographer in hong kong you know so baby showers birthday parties uh, kitty parties 
I've shot them all. A uh, lot of fun. I've done family portraits. Um, and that was that was the chance I got to start earning from this passion of mine that was a hobby and making it into a career where I could buy all the expensive equipment. And uh, I took off from there. Um, and that's how photography began in terms of events uh, for me here in Hong Kong. So from event photography, how did the journey continue? Um, I love going back to India. Uh, that's home. So every single time uh, I did go back home, I started going and joining all these workshops or photo tours they say that uh, where a group of people, you know, go and visit a place with a mentor. So there is a photography mentor there who teaches you uh, much more about photography. And that's what I started doing. So I started traveling and I can't believe it. I actually went back to India, to Jodhpur with, a, with an English photographer. So it was quite funny to being shown my own city or my own country or a city in my country by someone who was a foreigner. Um, and that's how it, uh, travel photography began for me. So a couple of tours that I did and uh, I was a student and I learned a lot. And after that, I never stopped. So I started exploring. There is so much to explore in our country. Um, and as a child, when I was growing up, uh, holidays were, you know, very exotic destinations. It's Europe and America. And, and we never got a chance to really see India, which I regret every day of my life right now uh, and that's what I did so the photographer you know as a photographer the camera brought me closer to my country and I started exploring rural India which has just so much culture uh, you know in terms of uh, we as people who live in big cities have no idea what's going on in our backyard you know so close to home and that's what I did so I've been traveling as a travel photographer and exploring and it's a journey back to my roots, as I call it. Yes. Isn't it such a pity that we have such a contrast, you know? I mean, India is such a rich country and we've always dreamed of, you know, going abroad, like a destination yes. of Europe or America, Switzerland, you know, strange at the ways of life. Anyway, so once you discovered India as your subject, what happened? Um, I always say life changed for me. I say, and I tell this to everybody, that the lens and the camera, it changed my life. I started seeing things very, very differently. You know, uh, coming from a privileged home, having gotten everything so comfortably, I started reflecting on a lot of life lessons that were taught to me by the camera. So um, when I started traveling, of course, going to new places, there's so much to see in a place, right? I mean, places can be very scenic. Uh, there are people who are over there that follow customs and traditions, wear outfits that are very different. Um, and I started connecting with people. And that's what I did. And, and suddenly I realized that I connected very well to people because I was taking portraits. And taking portraits was you are so up close and in person with that person. So personally, very little physical space between you two. And I felt like you had to connect to them emotionally if you had to shoot them or capture their story or wanted to tell something about them. Uh, so this is what I did. It, it started telling me more about myself. I started learning the values of life. Uh, I started understanding how grateful I am to what I have, to what people don't have. And all of this came as simple as being a photographer, it was just spending time with other people that made me realize that there is so much more to life than what I was seeing for so long. When a photographer captures a person, right? It may be a professional job. Most of it is a professional job, right? You, you pay, you go to the photographer and it is an hour session or something. And right. that's it, the job is done. Now you spend time making connections with people before actually capturing them. Right. How is the end result different? Uh, it's very easy taking your camera and going and shooting a subject or a character that has, you know, come into your notice or you think that they are, they would make a great subject. It's very simple to do that. Uh, just click them without their knowledge or, you know, you're quietly doing that on the side. But I, I don't feel I don't feel right to do that. It's it, I feel like I'm stealing something from them without their knowledge. So I usually go up to them. I speak to them. Uh, I spend a lot of time before I've actually taken that photograph, knowing more about them. And they're always curious to know why am I 
wanting to know about them and why am I with this camera or why am I not even shooting them sometimes it's like oh okay did you take a photo of mine and I'm like no I haven't but I will um, after doing that I feel that the barrier that is between the two of us as two people as two human beings has now been broken uh, they no longer feel threatened by this camera that I'm carrying uh, they no longer feel threatened uh, by me as a person and why am I so curious to know they have now gotten comfortable with me and uh, and that's it after that uh, if I can if I spend a lot of time just being around them not even talking to them I'm invisible to them they they are done with me uh, and then uh, you know the the candid shots come in or if I'm asking them something about their lives and if someone has gone through a certain emotion maybe they're telling me a sad story about what has happened to them their emotions are bound to turn into uh, sadness or into pain and that's when I capture it right it's capturing that moment it's it's a time thing and when you get that that's when you see uh, the the image of that person turned into an emotion uh, so it makes it makes a very big difference when you've spent time with them and known them and you have to appreciate them giving you the time as well uh, so most of the times I do this unless it's a fleeting image and there was this person who was going and I could see a very strong emotion and then it would be a stolen image as I call it, it would be a candid. Uh, but it makes a very, very big difference knowing a person and telling their story. So you're capturing emotions and not just the face or the That's structure, right. right? Now, you have turned into a documentary filmmaker. How did this transition from a still photograph to a moving image come about? Um, so being on the field, being into portraits, knowing people, understanding their stories became, you know, it became a part of this photography journey. Uh, and then I realized that I connect to people really easily when people are able to tell me a lot more about their lives that they would usually not share with a lot of people. Uh, I felt I was gifted and I, I felt, uh, I felt very strongly to things that were going wrong in their life or social issues that I would see on an everyday basis in India. You know, and India is a very big country, a lot of disparity, a um, lot of issues on every corner uh, of our streets. Um, as Indians, we choose not to see it. We choose to turn our heads away. It could be as simple as, uh, you know, a beggar child on the, on the signals. Uh, we turn our windows up. We never really want to know why is this child here? Uh, is she being forced by someone to be at this signal begging people? Is she really in need? We never want to find out anything about them. And that's when I said, um, I want to, I want to now make documentaries. And I started studying my journalism here, my master's in journalism here in Hong Kong University. It was, it was for me, it was like, the I have finally chosen my career. You know, as a, as a child, I, or a school or college, all of this was, you had to get a degree. So we get a degree or I did different courses that were maybe of no interest to me, but we did that. Finally, I felt like I, I knew what I wanted to do. So I got into journalism and I majored in documentary filmmaking and then came documentaries. So instead of just a single image or five images telling a story, now I was a storyteller in the world of uh, filmmaking. Amazing, amazing. Now you talk about storytelling. How do you decide what you're going to make a story on? Um, so topics that I feel very strongly about is what I decide on because I feel that if I'm not passionate about a story, I will not be able to deliver it passionately. And the viewer won't feel uh, that emotion that I am wanting to put forward because as a documentary filmmaker, the director or the camera person, we choose what we want you to see. Of course, it's all the truth. There is nothing that is being, uh, you know, uh, enacted or anything like that. It is all harsh reality, but also there is a way of showing it. So if I don't feel passionate about something, I don't think I'll be able to deliver it like that. So it's topics that I feel very strongly about as a mother of two children, drug addiction in children was very, very, was a topic that came across to me, which was very close to my heart. And I said, you know, we have to show the reality of this in our country. And that's why my first film was drug addiction in children in Delhi. And as young as eight years old, 16 years old, uh, 
being in a rehab center, trying to show uh, two sides of it, of how they take the drugs, how easily they are available and how difficult the rehab journey is. So that's exactly how I choose my topics. My topics are uh, things that are close to my heart or that need uh, attention, that need a call for action, that need a change. Um, and that's it. <laughs> right. Uh, choosing a topic like drug addiction as your first movie was it challenging? It was very ambitious, uh, very very ambitious, uh, definitely. Uh, when you know, it's it's so nice to hear a topic and see. Yes, I can. You know, this sounds. I will change the world, and this sounds amazing. But going on field and being there, it's a totally different story. Um, but I didn't want to give up. There, there was this persistence in me that I said doesn't matter how difficult it is, I am going to do it. And I did it. Uh, it was it was very hard. There were uh, very unsafe moments. There, there was always that, am I going to be safe? Am, is this going to end up in trouble? Am I going to be in trouble? My parents were not super happy with the story of that I was trying to capture. Uh, of course, no one would to be want their child to be in areas such as that. But I, I did it at the end of it. It, it took two years, uh, constant trips back home, but uh, great team. I had a very small team, but we, we achieved what we wanted to get. Uh, coming to the purpose of this movie on drug addiction, it became a runaway hit and you kind of raised a lot of money to help the people there. Did you so have this purpose in mind? So every documentary um, or anything that you're doing towards this, uh, towards social issues needs a change. And that change cannot come without the community getting together, without the society getting together. Uh, these are not small changes, you know, that come overnight. They take years and years and constant, uh, constant effort towards it. Of course, with this film, what I was trying to show that the rehab centers in our country are in very poor conditions. So even if a child wants to get rehabbed, uh, we don't have enough for our government uh, that they, they do not provide enough to the rehab centers that are trying to make the change. Uh, so the call for action of this documentary was to make sure that our rehab centers are efficient enough to turn the child into a new leaf, right? Uh, and this one, uh, luckily, again, won the award a charity organization felt very strongly about this. And we, in a, in a gala dinner, we raised 85,000 US dollars for the rehab center that I had shot at. Um, now, this is, you can say this is a very small change, right? We cannot make a massive difference in one day. But I think, uh, you know, a little bit can make a big difference. It can go a long way. So we started with that little bit. And I'm very happy that the Rehab Center has been getting the money every three to six months, and we are trying to change things for the good. Kudos to your effort, I would say. Small changes, one step at a time, you know, Definitely. one person at a time, rather. Yeah, it, uh, I always say that if one person uh, looked after another person in this world that needed to be looked after, uh, we would not be having half the issues we have over here. So uh, I wish everyone changes their uh, thinking and how they feel about the needy and how they need to help and to serve humanity in that manner as well. Right. Would you talk about your other film, Confluence? Uh, Confluence is very, very close to my heart because it is uh, from my favorite and my soul city, Banaras, Varanasi. Uh, I went there as a photographer. It was a solo trip. Loved Absolutely loved exploring exploring the place. There were so many facets of life. Uh, it was almost a full circle. Life and death came together in that one place. Um, and there was so much to show in that city. Uh, with no offense to uh, with no offense to the spiritual capital of our country, this city had a lot more going on at the back, which maybe people don't wish to talk about because the image of a spiritual city is supposed to be you are attaining moksha and everything, but I know traditions that came and, you know, uh, Banaras is a very traditionally rooted city of India. There was a lot going on. Um, prostitution comes with, uh, with traditions because the kings and the queens of our 
country used to get dancers for their entertainment and slowly this entire dance industry turned into prostitution uh traditions also gives birth to caste system you know that's what we have been learned the upper caste the lower class the brahmins the the kshatriyas there's so much and i saw the caste system very evident in in banaras as well it could be so i just took a sector of that what i saw and i made this into a documentary film that uh you know ironically we say that religion and god and all of that but are we overlooking a lot that we are supposed to be making a change for so the entire film revolves around the spiritual capital of india and these facets of life that are present over there as well so nani you talk about i would say uh, rather if i can say taboo subjects like drug addiction caste system prostitution were you ever afraid um, that you would you know disturb or offend some people i'm sure i'm sure a lot of people uh, don't like what i am doing uh, i mean something like drug addiction definitely i think everyone believes in it uh, that we need to make a change or the future of our uh, you know the future generation of our country or any country as such is in deep trouble with it so uh, but things like prostitution things like caste system uh, they are very religious issues that people feel very uh, maybe very strongly about and have their opinion but uh, i'm showing the truth uh i'm making you meet the people i am bringing you to people who are narrating their stories and their experiences so i don't think i'm fabricating anything and uh, it is your cho- your choice whether you want to open your eyes and face the truth or you want to live in this very bubbled world that you have created for yourself um so i would say that i show things that you don't want to see but if i show these things in a very visually attractive manner uh then you would want to see it and maybe uh i might be able to change one out of 10 people and their thinking towards it how would you describe your experience of going back to rural india at first at first it was very scary you know there was there are always elements of a place that are safe and unsafe i mean we could be in hong kong we can be in chicago or new york or london for that matter of fact there are pockets that are safe there are pockets that are not safe rural india also becomes very difficult because sometimes there's no network coverage you're not always available to the world even if you're in an emergency you might not be able to those are the few things but i can definitely vouch for it that they are much safer than the places that we live in people are much more warmer over there more hospitable simple and i really really feel that um there's soul there there's something so real about it that makes me feel alive uh we live in this concrete jungle as we call it uh, where people walk as robots every morning to work and robots back home there is no soul this is a soulless city uh, and i i miss home the most because of that um uh, just the fact that you could be walking down walking down your lane or your building and uh, the dhobi knows you the milkman knows you the vegetable vendor knows you and they know everything about you right uh, i miss that i miss i miss that interaction with real people uh, we this is a very superficial world uh, or a place that we are now existing in and slowly things are changing even in urban india things are changing and i hope it rural india stays like that but there is uh, yeah there is safety issues in every place i feel uh, it's just i felt more secure because of the really nice and real people that i met in these places yes they are so pure right they're like untouched by any of these social yeah. media stuff definitely and they've seen life so closely that uh, even if you stand on a, for a 5 minute conversation at a pan stall in banaras you are learning something or you just you know you're with the 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 boat guy who's taking you across river ganga and just listening to his stories you have suddenly found enlightenment as simple as that sonali would you say that you have scratched upon something called as social aspect of photography uh definitely i really really believe in the fact that when you are portraying stories and you are meeting these real people you are very responsible out there especially in this world of social media to put forward the truth and bring a change if you can 
uh, we can make, you can go on a trip for three days and make 2000 images. And uh, they all look amazing. They're very visually, you know, visually creative and you can be creative with whatever you're doing. Uh, but um, at the end of it, what? I always ask myself, what? So I have been, uh, you can say, promoting content for a cause because as photographers, as responsible people who are out there, and we are very lucky that we meet all these people and these people also open up to us, we can make a change. So apart from being just photographers who are bringing content to your screen so that y'all can get entertained with beautiful colors and very nice images, I feel that we can also make a difference uh, in very small ways. Uh, and that's why content for a cause. Um, I didn't realize that I have been doing this throughout until it, it happened as a pattern. And I said, okay, then I guess this is my path. This is my calling. And I do encourage all of them, all the amateurs out there, all photographers out there that we can make very big differences with, with maybe just an image, with maybe just a three minute video of a person and their lives can change. Right. Talking about changing lives, uh, there is this recent fundraiser that you created for the artists back in Rajasthan. Would you talk about that a little bit? Uh, so I went to I went to Jaisalmer, uh, Rajasthan being my my favorite of the of the state states of India. Uh, I went to Jaisalmer and I realized that we have a lot of culture that we come from uh, and culture that very sadly is not being appreciated by the Indians in the country. Uh, it might be appreciated by the non-resident Indians who are living abroad or by all the foreigners. Uh, I, growing up, I would see puppet shows and get very excited. I don't see the kids in this generation have even seen a puppet show. Uh, so when I went there and I, I said, you know, we have to safeguard our culture. It almost feels like our responsibility to bring forward to the, to the next generation this culture. You know, puppet show, magic shows on the street, uh, folk singing. Everything has become so commercial. Everyone's focus span and everything is so short now. They'd rather be on their gadgets and enjoy their entertainment like that. So I decided and I saw them suffering towards the, you know, during the pandemic, there were no tourists, no one to see them. And I decided to bring them online. So we did a fundraiser. We had them come online and perform for the world. And the fundraiser was quite successful. And we raised uh, 6,24,000 rupees for four families. Uh, which is absolutely amazing. It's, uh, you know, they suddenly see a ray of hope that uh, this culture is not going to die and that they will pass this on to their next generation. Uh, so small little things can change their lives. Um, there's another story of a very beautiful tribal girl who I have been photographing for seven years now and how people would, as photographers, took advantage of her and we, again, with Humans of Bombay, got together and raised uh, 20,000 US dollars, enough to buy her a home and her family a home and provide them with ration every month. And, and again, lives have changed. Uh, who knew that media is so powerful? So when you have that tool, the camera in your hand, uh, you can use it to someone's uh, life-changing experience. And I think that's how we have to do it. We have to feel more responsible towards others, being photographers or content makers. Yes. Uh, talking about responsibility, uh, you had once mentioned about, you know, so many photographers just piling around in the Pushkar Fair or any other place in Rajasthan. And they're shooting the local people as if, you know, they had the right to do it. Yeah, so it's, it's being a human being before being a photographer. It's as simple as that. You know, you cannot uh, take advantage of someone's helplessness and create that into a very strong image. Uh, a child crying. I mean, he might be crying out of hunger, mustn't have eaten for days. You have got a very strong image. So you are clicking away to glory. I get that, that you don't wish to miss the moment, but then don't turn away and go back, go away. You know, it's your work is not over. So human, you know, it's humanity before photography. And that's what I vouch for. Uh, we, I make sure that as a team of photographers, when we are out, we're carrying a bag of biscuits of chocolates of juices and that we can spread the joy, spread the cheer. You know, why wouldn't you, you, yes, you've, 
shot those tears and you've shot that pain for why would you not want to have the contrasting image of all those smiles and the happiness right uh, and that's what i i always tell people you know do not take advantage of other people just because you have that fancy camera and you can walk around and think that they are there for you just to get captured because they are waiting for that 10 rupees that you might be wanting to give them uh, so there's a lot more to life that photographers have to give as well and that's why humanity before photographer there are so many stories of photographers who were in in similar situations uh, where uh, you know they took a haunting image that became very popular and uh, that guilt that the photographer did not save that little girl he committed suicide you know so there are photographers who feel the guilt as well but why should you you know you be prepared for it when you're on field uh so that's what i would want to tell everyone over here who is getting into the field of photography does see people who need the help over there uh that let's make friends along the journey you know it becomes an extended family at the end of the day when you keep going back to the same place and they know you uh so make connections and just don't make images so lovely sanali we are not shooting we are just watching your films we are watching your fundraisers how can we help as general public so it's the same right you need one person to want to bring the community together so something like a fundraiser that happened i encouraged everyone to watch it online in you know, on a ticket was a 200 rupees and and that's how people can help or even when you step out of your house and you see you know there's this maybe a vendor who's been struggling to sell his wares or her wares and how do you help you know you probably have a uh, 100 contacts on your whatsapp all you have to do is you know talk to that person interview them even as an amateur just speak to them understand their story and share it with 100 friends and you alone could be changing that that man or woman's life just like that so i think we all can become photographers and videographers we can we can all make content for a cause you know you don't have to be an expert in doing that and like i said one person for one if that happened there would be no sadness or there would be no disparity left because someone was taking care of the other and i guess that's what everyone should do you know look around and see who needs it and uh, smartphones you know you have the best of cameras you have everything you really don't need my fancy dslr to tell a story or uh, to shoot uh, very beautiful breathtaking videos you don't right right we can all we can all contribute we can all make an effort sonali you run a mentorship program for photography when you visit india right so after so many years of uh, let's say i'm still learning and i i believe that every single day and of your life you're always learning the journey of learning never stops uh but from whatever experience that i have had uh i love to share it with other people uh this is not a treasure that is supposed to be kept for myself and i feel sharing it only makes my treasure bigger uh so i've been totally enjoying having these photo tours and workshops because i felt like i learned uh from my mentors when i was on these workshops and tours and now today becoming a mentor gives me immense joy and i can share all of this uh again we all get together we all share the same passion we are out on the field shooting uh and i'm really touched by so many testimonials that i've got from my people that uh from my students or participants who have said that not only have we learned photography from you but we learn life lessons and i think that's what we need to do we need to spread the happiness spread the love and uh, these programs uh make it easier for me to do that um so i've completely been enjoying being on these workshops on i've been doing online workshops uh, online classes for photography as well uh, i've been teaching children here in hong kong who are passionate about that uh to get on with the camera and uh, make amazing images uh so yes that's that's another facet of this entire journey of mine where do people follow you on social media uh instagram uh as we call it it used to be the most uh powerful platform i would say for photographers until it's been diluted with all these uh, dance videos tiktok converted reels and stuff like that but that is uh, where i do share all my work um and i have been very lucky that i've met a lot of like minded people on my journey and who have you know strangers turned into friends and now family uh so i would say instagram sonali d3 if you haven't followed me yet please do 
we will, we shall, I am already following. Sonali, on the last note, on a parting note, how would you sum up your journey, your photography journey from an event photographer to an independent filmmaker? I never planned anything. I can, I can definitely tell you that. Uh, and I think for people who feel like it's too late to start a passion, it's too late to study, or how can I do it? Uh, no questions asked. You, if you just step in there, the universe magically creates the most amazing scenarios for you to keep going forward and go up on that ladder towards success. And that's exactly what happened to me. So I would um, advise anyone and everyone, uh, you know, it can be photography, it can be videography, it can be a hobby, it can be, it's never too late to start and uh, believe in yourself uh, so much so that others start believing in you. Uh, you have to feel passionate towards what you're doing for others to have the faith in you for that as well. So that those are my two cents on it. Fabulous, Sonali. On that note, thank you very much for coming on my show and speaking with me. It was an amazing interview. Having... Yeah. Thank you so much, Sonali. Keep doing the good work and we will try to support you as much as possible. Amazing. Looking forward. Thank you. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, my name is Dipti Shah and thank you for watching my channel. If you like the content that I create here and the amazing people who come on the show, Artistry, then please subscribe to my channel and keep visiting it. Thank you very much for your time. I really appreciate it.